my maniacs, my miss, miss of mayhem, is I, uh, your noblest of horror hosts, Noah, the horror historian. And today, we do a couple things. One, we're going to cover Howling Horror Nights new announcement for two new houses. And number two, we're going to read the poem Calypso Borealis. This is going to be fun. The books are all Horror Nights. We got two new announcements. It's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website, but I know there are a couple of them. Halloween 4, Return of Michael Myers, and Poltergeist. Both houses will be really well received. We had Halloween in the past. We've never had Poltergeist in the past, however. I'm personally very excited for both houses, as the latest house we had announced on the website was the Carnival Graveyard House. That was a decent house announcement, but it's not as big as these two IPs. Now, let's get to Calissa Borealis and how I'm going to do this. I tried this once before, but I think I can do it better. We're going to read the entire poem. This is six paragraphs, so let's do this. After earning a few dollars working on my brother-in-law's farm near Portridge, Wisconsin, I set off on the first of my long excursions, both botanizing and glorious being around the Great Lake, and wandering through innumerable tarmac and arbor vitae swamps and forests of maple, basswood, ash, elm, balsam, fir, pine, spruce, hemlock, rejoicing in their bound wealth and strength and beauty, climbing the trees, reveling in their flowers and fruit like bees and beds of golden rods. Glory in the fresh, cool beauty and charm of the bog and metal, heart work, or heat work, grasses, carices, ferns, moss, liverworts, display in boundless profusion. profusion. The rarest and most beautiful of the flowering plants I discovered on this first grand excursion was Calypso Borealis, the hider of the north. I have been fording streams more and more difficult to cross and wading bogs and swaps that seem more and more extensive and more and more difficult to force one way, one's way through. I drew one of these great tarmac and Aravite swamps one morning, holding a general. Long, very crooked course by compass, struggling through tangled, drooping branches and over and under rotten heaps of fallen trees. I began to fear that I would not be able to reach the dry ground before dark, and therefore would have to pass a night in the swamp and began faint and hungry to plant a nest of branches of one of the largest trees or windfalls, like a monkey's nest or an eagle or an Indian in the, floor, in the flooding forest of the Orincora, described by Humboldt. But the sun was getting low, and everything seemed most bewildering and discouraging. I found a beautiful Calypso on the mossy bank of the stream, growing not in the ground but on a bed of yellow mosses, in which a small white bulb had found a soft nest, from which is one leaf and one flower sprung, and the flower was white and made the impression of utmost purity, like a snow flower. No other bloom was near it, for the fog, a short distance below the surface was so frozen. And the water was ice cold. It seems the most spiritual of all the flower people I have ever met. I sat down beside it and fairly cried for joy. It seems so wonderful that so frail and lovely a plant has such power over human hearts. This Calypso meeting happened some 45 years ago. It was more memorable and impressive than any of my meetings with human beings. Excepting perhaps Emerson and one or two others. When I was leaving the university, Professor J.D. Butler said, John, I would like to know what becomes of you. I wish you would write me, say, once a year, so I may keep you in sight. I wrote to the professor, telling him about this meeting with Calypso, and he sent the letter to an Eastern newspaper, a Boston reporter. 
with some comments of his own. These bars I know were the first of my words that appeared in print. How long I sat beside her lips, so I don't know. Hunger and weariness vanished, and only after the sun was low, sweat. I splashed through the swamp. Strong and exhilarated, as in never more to feel any mortal care. At length, I saw maple woods on the hill and found a log house. I was gladly received. Where have you come from? The swamp. That awful swamp. Where are you doing there? A morning, etc. Only a pure body has been lost in that muckle called dreary, dreary bond and never been found. When I told her I had entered in search of plants, I had been in it all day. She wondered how plants could draw me to these awful places. So, it's God's mercy you haven't got out. Oftentimes I have slept and sleep without blankets, sometimes without supper. supper. But usually I had no great difficulty in finding a little bread here and there at the houses of the farmer settlers in the widely scattered clearings. When one of these large backwoods bread, backwoods loaves, I was able to wander a main long while, fertile mile in the forest and bogs, free as the wind, gathering plants and glorying in God's abundant and exhaustible spiritual beauty bread. Storms, thunderclouds, winds in the woods were welcomed as friends. So that's the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. And if you do, please leave a like, subscribe, and put on notifications to alert you when my next video is. It's, I'm not a well-known channel, but I'm hoping to become one. And expect my next video to have my best friend or a couple of my friends in it. As we talk about Halloween of Horror Nights 26. But before that, me and my sister are going to do something very, very special for our video. It's back next week, or even tomorrow possible. Us doing the song Confrontation for the musical Jekyll and Hyde. Be good people, and may fear's light protect all of those who spread mis- May he protect all you misfits, spread chaos and mayhem throughout the world. And long live the nightmare that will soon. Only 38 more days until Halloween Horror Nights 28!